Hey everyone, it's Sarah the Register Nurse RN.com, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the stages of Alzheimer's disease. So let's get started. First, we have preclinical Alzheimer's disease, and this is where changes are occurring in the brain, but no symptoms are noted, and this can happen over years. Next is mild cognitive impairment, and this is where the patient starts to have memory changes that are subtle, but it doesn't affect their activities. They may start forgetting recent commitments, new people they've met or conversations they've had recently, and they start to get confused on places and time. And they may report, you know, something just doesn't feel right in my brain. It, it's like I can't think clearly. And this stage can last for several years. Next is mild Alzheimer's disease, and this is early stage Alzheimer's. This is typically when patients are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. They're gonna start having mild forgetfulness that is noticed by the patient, family members, and friends. And it's beginning to affect some parts of their functioning. They're gonna have short-term memory problems, like they're going to frequently lose objects, can't remember new material they've just learned, maybe start having trouble at their jobs, learning new things. They'll start repeating themselves and asking the same questions over and over. Language problems can start, like they're trying to talk to you, but they forget a word. And they may start having mental instability, which is gonna be recognized by family members, like depression, confusion, having sleep problems, things that just isn't normal for the patient. Now, the thing with this stage is that they can still function and be in independent. What's going on with them in their brain isn't affecting their ability to live out life. But during this time, if the patient's diagnosed knows they have Alzheimer's, this is when the nurse wants to go over with the patient about the progression of the disease and tell the patient it's time to start planning for the future and incorporating family members as they want to, like discussing end of life care, estate planning, and so forth. And this stage lasts a couple of years. Next is moderate Alzheimer's disease, the middle stage. Now, this is when things start to change. Confusion now sets in that affects the patient's ability to function and they're gonna need help. Safety is a main issue with this patient along with helping them with their self-care and medical needs. So their judgment is going to start to become lapsed. They are going to have major safety issues, getting lost, um, doing a thing called wondering, which I'm gonna go over in the nursing interventions. They uh, will forget how to cook or use objects with hygiene. They need help with the bathroom, how to dress, especially depending on the weather, they may not pick the right outfits. Confusing family members, having sleep problems, major mental instability, where they have episodes of anger and anxiety and hallucinations. So during this stage, the patient is active. They can get up and move around, but they don't have the cognitive ability to make sure that they're doing the appropriate things without getting hurt. Also, caregivers may start recognizing a phenomenon called sundowner syndrome. And as a nurse, I have seen this. This is absolutely real. And as the day draws closer to evening, the patient will start to get confused. They may become more agitated. They'll start hallucinating and just get really restless. So this stage for the caregiver is a very intense time because the patient must be monitored at all times and requires a lot of supervision and care. And this stage of Alzheimer's is actually the longest stage of all. Then lastly, we have the severe Alzheimer's disease stage called late stage. And this is where symptoms are very severe. A lot of times they're no longer able to participate in life, like have language communication, will be very minimal with limited motor activities. They're gonna spend much of their time in bed, sitting, staring. Uh, they can start to have problems with swallowing, eating, and they're gonna need constant care during this time. Now, because they start having issues with swallowing, like called dysphagia, they are at huge risk for lung infections like pneumonia. A lot of times patients develop this. So the patient needs to be evaluated by a speech language pathologist to see if they may need a feeding tube or their liquids need to be thickened or their food consistency should be altered to help protect those lungs. Now, interacting with a patient during this stage is just as important as interacting with them before they progress to this stage. But communication does change a little bit because like I said, they're gonna have minimal communication skills. So using nonverbal communication, like facial expression, body gestures is good, using touch as needed, and just providing a calming, relaxing environment for the patient during the day, like with music, promotes good quality care. Okay, so that wraps up this review. And if you'd like to watch more videos in this series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.